It really took a lot of her dignity. You know, from somebody who was such a, a strong single mother, you know, somebody that I, had, I had seen as, you know, a pillar of strength for a long time, you know, to want to live on the streets and just give up everything. Hi, my name is Willie. I'm from Livingston, and my mom's name is Gail. My mom uh, is from Browning, Montana, which is the Blackfeet Reservation. Um, she was the first Miss Blackfeet in uh, 1979. Uh, she was a shawl dancer. Watching my mom dance at powwows is probably one of the most beautiful things. My mom was pretty amazing, very, very unconventional, um, very outspoken, but she's very loving, um, very patient and comforting. I didn't understand that that was something that could be addiction. I mean, to me, if it's the doctor gives it to you, then, you know, I mean, it should be okay, right? I mean, you know, I was just a teenager at the time, so it's not like I really even thought about that. It took a lot of focus from her. Um, she gave up dancing for a while. I mean, physically, she couldn't really do much. Um, you know, it changed her physically, her appearance, um, and her personality. It was, I mean, she chose to be homeless, live on the streets of Browning. She lived behind Walmart and Town Pump in Great Falls. It took everything from her. I think she's an amazing woman. Um, but yeah, she missed out a lot. Um, I know my kids are amazing, I think. <laughs> They probably could have benefited from somebody like her too. You know, I wanted them to be around her, not just for cultural reasons. She was just awesome when she was herself. When she was doing those things, that beauty that I saw, I wanted my kids to witness that. Some people encouraged me to give her an ultimatum, like like walk away. I couldn't do that. I just, I just loved her too much. She was found in the street in front of a house. Um, she was brain dead. Uh, she had a body temperature of 74. What was going through my head when I got the phone call about my mom? Uh, like I couldn't remember her voice. I hadn't spoken to her in you know, 24 days. And I was trying to remember her laugh. And for some odd reason I couldn't. It was just, you know, everything was like tunnel vision. Um, and I was just hoping, and I'm not a religious man, but you kind of pray, I guess, in a way. I had to take her off life support because she was never going to come out of it. I mean, she was cold, and you know, I'm the oldest, so I had to make the call. And she would always call me her anchor to this world. If it wasn't for me, she was going to be gone. Um, she said that all the time. Being who I am in her life, like. You know, I'm going to be the one that gets to let her go, like, let her be at peace. So I was, yeah, giving her a gift. I'm not entirely sure I am coping. Um, I think that maybe most people do. I think, uh, I'm just kind of more focusing on, you know, my family and music and art. Um, as a father learning from a mother, you know, a strong, independent woman at some point, you know, that, that had a lot of impact on me and how I wanted to, you know, I want to pass that on to my kids. I feel like, you know, painting, drawing, music is, is something I've always done. So it is very therapeutic for me. I mean, we all start drawing when we're little, you know, pick up a crayon. I just didn't stop, you know, it's uh, a way of like playing, a way of getting lost in yourself. And it's part of your expression, so that's cool. Like, you know, you're letting stuff out, so I just kind of stuck with it. But yeah, very therapeutic, even now, I think. More so just because there's a lot going on, you know, in there. So it's good to let it out. I'm sharing my story because I think it, it helped a lot of other people. I feel like there's there's such a negative outlook on, on people, you know, addiction and people are, you know, 
involved in the, that type of lifestyle. I mean, they're, you know, like I said with my mom, she's a beautiful person. She's the most beautiful person I knew, you know, and, and addiction happened to her. That's kind of more how I see it. You know, she was still Gail. She was still my mom. She's still a great person. And I think a lot of people just, they, they write people off because they're involved in addiction. They're, they're looking for help. And they're looking to be back who they used to be. There's a lot of, of who they are still there. And I don't think you should give up on them. What I hold dear about my mom is, you know, uh, the funny little personal moments that we had together. She always tried to make me laugh and she knew I was down. She would uh, sing the wrong lyrics to songs, you know, and <laughs> she'd dance, you know, she'd put on power music, but she would dance like a man. And just letting me know that, you know, she loved me. She loved me enough to fight for me. So yeah, I hold that really close. You can help prevent prescription drug abuse in Montana. Resolve to always use the exact dosage, safely store your medications, Dispose of unused pills, never share your prescription drugs, and start the conversation with others about the dangers of addiction. Find resources like safe disposal locations, conversation starters, and treatment options in Montana at resolvemontana.org and sign the pledge to show your support. This message brought to you by the Montana Attorney General's Office.